are 30 years old. Martin Hamlet is one inch taller, one pound heavier. A one inch reach advantage in both the arms and the legs. It all checks out, Kenny Florian. <laughs> Lillian Garcia, please, let's go. Over 20 nations are proudly represented here in the PFL season. And now we continue the action in the light heavyweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, he specializes in judo. Standing at six feet even, he weighs in officially at 204 and one half pounds. In 16 professional bouts, he has a record of 11 victories and five defeats with nine wins by way of stoppage. Fighting out of Oop McGay, Lithuania, here is Theodotis Oxwallis. His opponent fighting out of the red corner. He is a wrestler. Standing at 6'1", he officially weighs in at 205 and 3 quarter pounds. In 11 professional bouts, he has a record of eight victories and three defeats with six wins by way of stoppage. Fighting out of Tunsberg, Norway, here is Martin. The Dark Horse Himalayan! Your referee in charge, Carrie Hatley. Carrie Hatley oversees the action. He's back. At this moment, potentially six points on the line for that man, Martin Hamlet, and his opponent, Theodorus Oxtwolis. Hamlet out of Norway, Oxtwolis out of Lithuania. Touch of the gloves, and we are underway. Oh, big oh, right boy. hand. Immediately, Martin Hamlet with some success, and now gets body into the clinch. Nice body lock. Big body lock and a toss, and now Teodoros Oxtualis already with a cut over his left eye, has to figure out how to get out from under the Greco-Roman champion, eight times over from Norway. Yeah, it was a beautiful short right hand there from Hamlet. It was a textbook body lock. Great job of closing the distance, getting to that clinch, using his hips. It looked like he started an inside trip. When <clears throat> Theodorus adjusted his hips, he captured him and, and threw that body lock. Very, very nice. And we've seen how dangerous Martin Hamlet can be even from within a closed guard. He's not afraid of ground and pound, obviously, and he'll try and set up submissions from here, Kenny. Yeah, he's so strong. Hit a beautiful arm triangle from inside the closed guard, something I haven't seen very often in mixed martial arts. But right now, he's got excellent head positioning. Hasn't been so active with his ground and pound just yet, but looks like he's trying to get posture. And Oakshwalis trying to control that head and arm. Theodorus has not let Martin Hamlet get that right arm free. He's kept the guard closed. Double-edged sword there, obviously, when you're on the bottom with that closed guard, Kenny. Yeah, that's right. For Oxwallis, I'd like to see him try to get those feet and the hips, try to create some space where he can get back to his feet. And now Hamlet gets the right arm out. Temporarily, Oxwallis goes right back to the overhook. We see Hamlet right here inside the guard. And what I'd like to see is Oxwallis try to get his feet in the hips where he can create some space there and push away. I agree, Kenny. I think you've got to get those big levers back in the fight. Closing your guard locks you into that bottom position. You've got to be able to create scrambles, create space. That's going to be a challenge with a guy like Hamlet on top of you, but you've got to do that and get back, get those long levers back in the fight. Little old school MMA there. Martin Hamlet putting the glove over the mouth and nose of Theodore Oxtualis, hampering the breathing and just making life miserable on the bottom. Maurice Smith, the first guy I ever saw do that. And I think I was on the receiving end of that, possibly. That lockdown defense from Oxtualis earns him a stand-up with two minutes remaining here in the first round. Flying knee attempt there from Hamlet. Wow! And a big left hook. Martin Hamlet striking, looking sharp here in round number one. Yeah, he's looking loose and relaxed, and Oxwallis looks a little tight, and he's telegraphing a lot of his shots. 
Another takedown here from Martin Hamlet and more close guard from Theodorus Oaks who has yet to get anything significant going on the offensive end. Hamlet said he's been working on using his wrestling and more effectively in fighting positions and learning to control and use his energy better as well, and we're seeing that tonight. Theodorus Oaks his entire MMA career has taken place in Japan. Uh, a lot of those fights under the Ryzen banner. He actually has a knockout victory over last year's heavyweight champion here in the PFL, Bruno Capeloza. That was two weight classes ago for, for Bruno Capeloza. Yeah. <laughs> Looked like a completely different person, quite frankly. Totally different body makeup for Bruno back then. One minute remains in this first round. There's another look through the ghost cam. Randy, if you're Martin Hamlet, how do you mount meaningful offense from this closed guard? Uh, he's got a posture. He's got to get his head out of his chest, bring his hips in, try and use his knees to saddle in and capture those hips of Te Theodorus and posture up. From there, Theodorus has to come up to try and get him to tie him up. And when he does that, he'll walk into a big punch every single time. So I think that posture is a key for creating real damage from a closed guard. Here come the final 10 seconds of this first round. So a six point proposition looks like it won't come to fruition, but five points still on the line when we return on ESPN Plus. Sean O'Connell and Randy Couture and Kenny Florian, light heavyweight action, and it's Martin Hamlet, all Martin Hamlet in round number one, Kenny. Yeah, a couple of beautiful right hands there from Hamlet, and he enters right into the takedown. Look at that lift and turn. Beautiful takedown there from Hamlet. And here's this short right hand. He blocks it beautifully, stays right in the pocket, gets his head off center line, lands a beautiful right hand, getting the respect from Oxwallis. Martin Hamlet in the gold trunks, Theodore Oaks in the black and gray. One more touch of the gloves. See if the Lithuanian fighter can make something happen. He goes jab to the body there. Take a look at our fighter performance rating. A strong 92-point score for Martin Hamlet. FPR attempting to become a oh, big right hand. Yeah, he's landing that right hand again and again. Hamlet showing big improvements in his overall game. And he's entering right behind it, Randy. He's using that right hand to get into these clinch positions where obviously as a Greco-Roman champion, he's very comfortable. Of all the styles of wrestling, I think Greco-Roman wrestling translates best to mixed martial arts because of the upright posture in that technique. And uh, from this, especially with a barrier like this against the cage, these guys that have this background can, can really, really do well and be effective from here. I don't know, Kenny, have you ever seen a Greco-Roman wrestler? <laughs> MMA? That. I would love to say that Randy's <laughs> biased, but he's not. I, I actually think he's correct. Uh, you know, especially with the cage, your ability to control in there, dictate the pace, and also mix strikes in, the, in that clinch position uh, is huge, and Hamlet doing it extremely well right now. The most impressive thing I've seen in Hamlet, in Hamlet so far is that composure. He's so much more relaxed and comfortable in there. He's, like he said, managing his energy output much, much better this season. Which is really interesting given what we've seen from Omar Yachmedov and Rob Wilkinson, right? Because you need points. Obviously, the win is most important for Martin Hamlet, but we got a six-point first-round finish from Omar Yachmedov. We got the second round finish for Rob Wilkinson that gave him five points. Climbing to mount As here. As Hamlet climbs to mount, he may be able to set up a choke attempt and get himself five points here in the second round. See him isolating Oxtoulis' right arm. Look for him to try and find a way to get to that arm triangle again. Yeah, so far he's showing good patience, trying to work that elbow up, see if he can get it across the face of Oak Schwalis. Oak Schwalis trying to frame away, trying to create some kind of space. That's Hamlet. a big man in mount. Hamlet digging in with that head, trying to find a way to push that elbow up and over and slide into that arm triangle position. Lost the mount now. 
Oxtola's doing a nice job of getting back the half guard. Okay. Hamlet looking, looking to use his right instep to try and pull the leg, left leg free, climb back into the full mount. Oxtola's vined in, now he's let the vine go. There's the vine again. Yeah, Oaks Wallace not really able to create much offense off of his back, really just trying to stall the game and slow down Hamlet, which can get you stand-ups, but, you know, it, it's still, there's no threat to Hamlet. Hamlet's going to feel comfortable here setting up, advancing his position, setting up his ground and pound. And this is why I think Hamlet needs to work on posturing. Get him, get his head up, bring his hips in. So what if the guy scrambles and gets away? You've already taken him down multiple times in this fight. Take him down again. 100%. I think that's what we saw from Wilkinson a, a couple fights ago. He, he did it so well. Yeah, fairly conservative approach from the top position here for Martin Hamlet, who has 90 seconds left to get a finish in this second round. Theodorus Oxtuolas, just no offense for that young man so far. That vine is really frustrating Hamlet. He can't pass that half guard. Now he's starting to climb through. This is a much better position here for Hamlet. There's the mount. Hamlet trying to set this up, and you can see the live fighter performance rating score alongside strike speed, arm strikes, and leg strikes. Once again, heavily in favor of Martin Hamlet. This is where Hamlet should really try to posture up and rain down blows yeah, here. Yeah, I agree. Climb his hips up, those knees up into those armpits, get high, posture up. And it, especially with that fence, that barrier as close as it is, going to be very difficult on Oxtulis to get out of there. Theodorus Oxtulis has, to his credit, done a good job of negating some of the more significant offense from this top position, but it's been control control position after control position for Martin Hamlet, and Oxtrolis is going to have to figure it out in round number three. The final five seconds of this second round, we will see the third frame on ESPN Plus when we return. And here's the one area where Martin Hamlet has really improved. He fakes the shot, level change, and that big overhand right. Now that was a little long. But he comes, follows it right to the clinch, captures the hips, pulls the legs out from underneath the, the box Tulas. Very, very nice transition by Martin Hamlin. All right, here we go, round three, last round in. Four still points work. still on the line here in the third round. Hamlet in the gold trunks, Oakstrolis in the gray. The final FPR score for that second round. Oh, nice combination there from Oakstrolis. The most significant offense he's had so far in the fight. This is what Oxtrolis needs to do. Put together combinations. Try to aim for the chest of Hamlet. Oh, big nice uppercut. uppercut. Going to need a follow. And once again, Hamlet in on the takedown attempt. He's got a double unders. He's got a body lock position. Over under. Excuse me, over under. Circling towards that underhook side to try and capture the hips. Now he switched to a single. High single attempt by Hamlet. He's got him up and puts him down. We've been talking about horsepower has been a theme in this 25 pound <laughs> yes. on display. I, I, I don't know if people fully appreciate watching how easy he made that look, how not easy it is to make it happen. Oak Schwalis actually connected himself to Hamlet, which allowed him to get the takedown a little bit easier. Should have been creating space there, trying to get his legs heavy to the floor. But again, when you have a guy like Hamlet with that kind of wrestling background, it's going to be difficult. But I, I'm seeing a lack of patience from o Oak Schwalis. Head over to collectibleexchange.com for autographed event use gear and posters from your favorite PFL fighters. That's collectibleexchange.com. Martin Hamlet continues to pressure from the top. Theodorus Oxtrolis trying once again to negate that offense. Oh. 
Okay, you see Hamlet's head here. He's very tight to Oxwall. It's just hard for him to create space and get leverage on his punches. He needs to posture up, get that head over the head of Oxwallis with space so he can land some big shots. Referee stands it up. Round three, halfway gone, that left hook. Looked like it landed, but Hamlet presses right through. Oxwallis trying to dig himself out of this hole. Yeah, Barton Hamlet continues with the pressure against the cage. Yeah, this is where he wants to try to avoid going for that front headlock or arm and guillotine, though, because that's gonna, just going to allow Hamlet to get underneath him and take him down. This is much better if he's fighting for underhooks, trying to fight for head position. He'll be much better off here up against the cage. Absolutely correct. You've got to get some inside control and pull that guy up chest to chest so he isn't down in there on your hips and your waist. And that's Hamlet wearing on him. Again, able to muscle his way into a takedown. And Oxwalls just looks tired. I, I think fighting those takedown positions, he just kind of just dropped to his back after that one. Nice pass by Hamlet to half guard. Here's another position, especially with that fence behind him. He could posture up, get his hips in, his head up, and really rain down some big shots from this position. Trying to cross, cross side all the way here, trying to slip out. There he is, cross side. Oh, goes right for the <coughs> face up. Yeah, he's got that crucifix now, Randy. Crucifix, yeah. I got so intently watching, I forgot to say the word. You can see the Acronis fight tracker. Reading the position on these fighters, most of it has taken place in this uh, sort of outer rim. A lot of that action right up against the cage. Hamlet's used that to his advantage in this bout as the third round ticks down. Theodorus Oxtuolis, his first pro MMA fight in four years. He's been training consistently. He's been competing in combat sambo, but no answer for Martin Hamlet. Yeah, being away from the cage for that long can definitely create some serious rust. But we're also seeing a very sharp Martin Hamlet tonight. Final 10 seconds of this light heavyweight bout. Martin Hamlet, last season's runner-up, wrestles his way to what should be a fairly straightforward decision. Who won the fight? Fighter performance rating says it was Martin Hamlet, Randy, and Kenny agree. What will the judges say? Lillian Garcia has that answer. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored the bout 30-27. For your winner, by unanimous decision, earning three points in the light heavyweight division, Martin Hamlet! Great decision, much more refined Martin Hamlet. I think there's still a couple small things that he can adjust to even be more effective, from, especially from that top position. All right, I'm here with the winner, Martin Hamlet, uh, successful season four debut. You wrestled your way to victory here, but we made the observation the striking did look a little bit more comfortable. Did it feel more comfortable? Yeah, it feels more comfortable. <laughs> I believe that I had that skill in the final as well, but I didn't get time to show it. But when shits go down, you stay to the basic. And I want to see today, that's wrestling. Uh, a lot of great pressure against the cage, a lot of great takedowns, obviously. And once you got on top, he, he couldn't get out. That control is really what won you this fight. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I had had a war with my mental game since the final because it impacted me a lot to lose in less than three minutes in the final. And when you start doubting yourself, it's starting to be a hard week of training. But today I, I beat that man on my shoulder that telling me, hey, you can't do it. You won't get that done. 
And uh, my motivation is my two kids back home, my family. I need to bring the paycheck and some gifts, you know, from the US. So I'm happy with this win. I want to thank my coaches. Selma Brisha, a hell of a guy, and he has been a life-changing trainer for me and back home with Andy and my team frontline. It's good. Uh, walk us through what it's like being in that locker room and seeing uh, Wilkinson get five points and Omari Akhmedov get a six-point finish. Did it change the dynamic of this fight at all for you? Well, and uh, Wilkinson got the five pounds. I turned off the TV not to just get distracted because the win is also important. Next fight, I mean, we see how it happened, but I need to need to get a finish in my next fight, and then you probably will see it, you know. I got the uh, good punches today, but the man got the chin, so yeah. Let's see what happened next. Martin Hamlet, victorious in his season four, first regular season bout.